We're going to be going over the steps in Photoshop here to edit your portraits. Uh, the purpose of editing your portraits in Photoshop is to get the best possible lighting uh, where you're able to have a good amount of contrast with mid-tones and then highlights and shadows. Uh, that way you're able to really draw uh, and show that contrast the best that it can be. Uh, and then we're also going to make these photos black and white just to take the color out of it uh, to make it a little bit more easy to really focus on uh, the value change within the portraits. So first of all, to get started, you're going to open your image. Uh, I'm going to file and then open. You'll then browse and find where your image is, but I already have mine opened right here. Um, we're going to be adding a few things. The first is levels. The second is curves. And then the third, we will make it black and white. Um, to get started with levels, we're going to go up to layer at the top of your screen, down to new adjustment layer, and then over to levels. I'm going to hit OK. Now levels is a great way to go color by color and adjust the lighting in each of the separate areas of your portrait. Um, so I'm going to start and find this little drop down arrow. I'm selecting red. So this is going to take all of the red areas, which are mainly going to be lips and then areas in the skin tone, and we're going to balance out the lighting in those areas. Um, because the lighting on the red color of the face or um, the face versus the lighting of the hair and the background are different, so it's important to separate these areas out by color to get the best overall lighting for your portraits. So I'm starting with red. I'm going to go to these two little outside uh, arrows here. I'm not doing the ones on the bottom, but the little one uh, notches right underneath the histogram. Um, on my keyboard, if you have a MacBook, I'm holding down Option, and then I'm clicking on this, dragging it in towards the right. And what this is showing me right now is in the red tones, it's going to show me all of the areas that will be completely black. Now you uh, don't really want much of the face to be completely black, but you do want a few shadows. So when I hold this down and drag this over, I don't really care if my background's completely black because it already has that dark value to start with. So having uh, these this color show up in the background is completely fine. So I'm gonna drag that over till it starts to affect the face. So you can see the areas of the face that are starting to become completely black. And I don't want to completely lose uh, detail in the shadows, so I'm going to stop there. And then on the right side of the histogram are the highlights. So I'm holding down Option again, and I'm clicking and dragging this over. Now I don't want the entire face to be completely white, so there's not much that I'm going to change about the highlight. I might just drag it over a tiny bit, but again, I don't want um, too many areas completely white. I want to be able to still see that value change, but still have highlights as well. So now I'm going to do the same thing for green, holding down Option, clicking and dragging uh, the shadows over. Again, I'm okay with the background being completely black, but once it starts to affect the hair and the face, that's when I'm going to stop. Then I'm holding down Option, and this time I can add a little bit more of the highlights. I'm okay with part of the hair and part of the face being completely white, but I don't want to go uh, beyond that too much. And then the last color, blue, I'm going to click and hold down Option, drag that over till it starts to affect the hair, and then I'm clicking, holding down Option, and this is where I'm um, bringing in the highlights, and I'm looking at the face. I'm okay with part of the shirt being completely white, but I don't want too much of the face to be completely white there, so I'm going to stop. And then when I'm done, I'm going to click this little X, and over in the Layers panel, you can see where the Levels was added. If I hide that, you can see before and after. So it's nothing extreme, but you can definitely tell a difference with uh, the highlights and shadows and how it really affected those individual areas of color uh, as you edit the highlights and shadows there. So it's these small little differences that will make a huge adjustment to your final um, portrait. So next I'm going to do curves. In the same spot, I'm going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer over to curves. I'm going to hit OK. And then this brings up another histogram. Now this is affecting the overall contrast. So I'm going to change all the colors at once here. I'm going to create something that's called an S curve. So I'm going to create somewhat of an S shape out of this histogram. So I want the highlights to be a little bit brighter. So in the upper right corner of that line, I'm bringing the highlights up slightly. 
Now it will depend on your, um, your photo and your lighting, how much you bring that up, but I wouldn't do too much, especially if you did a good job with the levels, you shouldn't have to adjust too much with the contrast here. But I'm gonna bring those dark areas down just a little bit to really emphasize that lighting and contrast so when I'm drawing, I can really have a good end result. Now the last thing is black and white to get rid of those color to help you really focus on your portrait and the value change. So same spot, I'm going up to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. I'm gonna hit okay. Now it makes my image black and white here, but one thing or the last step I want you to do before you finish is look through these colors and just make sure that it doesn't um, look better if you're able to kind of slide these over. So I don't wanna completely lighten my image here, otherwise I lose detail on the left half of the face. Um, but as I slide this around, I might want to bring a little bit more shadow in on that right side to really increase that contrast. So play around with each of these colors. It's nice to just kind of manually see the difference and get that desired result that you want for your end, um, end portrait. All right, so when you're done, you're going to close out of that. Again, you can hide these to see uh, before and after, see what the differences are. When you're done, you can save it. Um, and either print it out if you're using that as a reference or just leave it open in Photoshop to use to uh, to look at as you're drawing. If you do leave it in Photoshop to draw the facial features on the next step, um, if you hold down Command and then hit the plus button, which is by the delete, um, delete button on your keyboard, you're able to then zoom in, which will help for when we're drawing separate facial features. So again, that was Command plus and then to zoom out is Command minus.